ever knew. I don't know what politician you have reference to. Well, it isn't Mr. Bryan, then it must be Mr. Hughes. Again, you're wrong, and to the throng I'm going to introduce that Barney Google with a goo goo googly eye. Uh, I went to the uh, comedy and novelty section. You have several albums full of 78s. And uh, let's see, what did I find? Oh, here's a record by Cal Stewart who was the most famous comedian on records for about the first 20 years of the, of the 20th century. This is Uncle Josh's letter from home. I went up to the post office, see if they had any mail for me, and while the door had to be, they got a merry-go-round. Uncle Josh was a character created by Cal Stewart, and he was a crusty old New England farmer, and he was either distrustful or totally clueless about modern inventions. Jim said I had to turn a crank to shoot it off. I turned that crank until my eyes stuck out, but it wouldn't budge. And there were several by Spike Jones, of course, who is a very central to my show. This is one that actually wasn't too big of a hit back then, but I play it on my show quite a bit. Uh, ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. If you're in a conversation and you need a quick reply, say, ugga, ugga, boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga, 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 boo, ugga, boo, boo, ugga. In the 78s, of course, I also looked for the blues. And uh, no, they don't have any Robert Johnson today in the blues section or Charlie Patton, but they've got a bunch of R&B from the uh, 1940s and 50s on 78s for not too much money. Johnny Otis, he was a Greek, but he was pretty well accepted by just about everybody in the R&B community here. He had this big band that was just about all black musicians. And here's Harlem Nocturne, one of his big hits from the 40s. <laughs> Much later, Johnny Otis and his band uh, played at our wedding reception when Sue and I got married. So, Wonderful. in 1984. And so that was a, a, a real treat. So, wow. your turn. Wow. And I also always like to look in the comedy section, so I went straight over there. And just like always happens to me when I come to Amoeba, instead of what's in my bag, it should be like what's in my wheelbarrow because <laughs> I just randomly walk around and find like millions of things I would like. So I'll start with what I found in the comedy section. The first thing I picked up today was the Steve Martin record. And now let's repeat the non-conformist oath. I promise to be different. I promise to be unique. When I was a kid and Steve Martin first broke, he was something totally different and unique. And as a little kid, it was something I really loved. And there's a track on here called King Tut that was a huge novelty hit when I was a kid. And when I was producing Dr. Demento Covered in Punk, I wanted Fred Schneider to do King Tut. And I thought it would have been perfect. And Fred wanted to do Fluffy, which is an excellent choice and made me really go further outside the box than I was already. But I'm holding out B-52's King Tut for volume two. Also in that same section, I realize I do not have a Don Rickles album. What's your first name, Tiny? Seriously, what's your first name? God bless you, Charlie. Six, six and 240 pounds. Oh, what do you eat for supper? Furniture? Every comedy collection I think needs one. Don mm -hmm. Rickles was amazing. Um, I actually had the unique pleasure of meeting Don Rickles in a restaurant when I was having dinner with Tommy Ramone. And Don Rickles came over and I think he thought I was one of the Ramones because he said to me, oh yeah, I love your music. And did like a, one of his usual things. And Tommy Ramone's just looking at me like, can you believe that this is actually happening, that we're really experiencing it? So that was like a treasured moment. So yeah, I gotta have a Don Rickles album. So this is the one. So then also in comedy I found a track I wanted to be on Dr. Demento covered in punk that no one took to and I kept pitching was Let's Talk Dirty to the Animals by Gilda Radner. The animals, the animals, let's talk dirty to the animals, fuck you, Mr. Bunny, eat shit, Mr. Bear. And I loved this album and I loved that song. And after thinking about it all this time, I wanted to hear it again, so I found Gilda Radner's record and getting that one. 
And what a power couple, Gilda Radner and Gene Wilder were married, and you know, what a combination that must have been. I played that one on the show, uh, bleeped on the radio, and then now that I'm online, unbleeped. So, and I went to the 45s looking for comedy, and of course I found they're coming to take me away, haha, -ha, Napoleon the 14th. They're coming to take me away, haha, -ha, they're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, haha, -ha, to the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats And they're coming to take me away You've got about a half dozen copies of this in various conditions I want pretty nice looking ones for two or three bucks So if you, if you want that cornerstone of dementia in your collection on the original copy With, with the same song backwards on the other side, you got it Wet Dream, the original Wet Dream, one of the all-time hits from my show, and uh, here's a pretty nice-looking copy of it, original cover. She came over to me, she said, hey, big boy, you're really a game fish. What's your name? I said, Marlin. Oh, and Shelley Berman. Doctor, I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but I am getting panicky. I can't get an MD. I've got a bad cut on my finger. Now, I've looked you up in the phone book, sir. I see that you're a veterinarian. And I was just wondering, you know, with your knowledge of medicine, if you couldn't help people, too, once in a while. Well, it's on the first finger of my left hand. All right, if you want to put it that way, sir, my left forepaw. <laughs> All right, so now I'll take you into the world of punk rock because we blend punk rock and comedy and Dr. Yeah. Demento covered in punk. So I grabbed some staples, starting with, of course, The Misfits. The Misfits Collection 1. We did it as features. You think we really care. I no goddamn son of a bitch. You better think about it, baby. Some of the classic stuff. Uh, from the Misfits from the 77 to 83 period on this one. I think every punk rock library needs this record and all the rest in the Misfits catalog and the X-ray specs. This is another album that's really a must-have in every punk rock collection. I don't have it on vinyl. I only have the CD, so I was glad to pick up a vinyl copy. Um, the Germ Free Adolescence. Every track on here is amazing. Devo. New Traditionalist was the record that got me into Devo. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. It's a beautiful world. The first time I ever saw Devo was when they were on Saturday Night Live and I was really little and they actually scared me. And I told <laughs> Jerry Casale that and he loved it. But when I was old enough to understand and appreciate Devo, New Traditionalist just came out. Another one with so many great tracks on it, and I've been wanting to listen to it again, um, so I wanted to get the CD, so New Traditionalist. All right, so now I'll jump you into soundtracks. I absolutely love soundtracks. I have ever since I was a little kid. I was walking through Port Authority with my father, and Jaws was huge, and I loved the score, and the soundtrack was the, in the window of a store in Port Authority, so my father bought it for me and that's the first soundtrack I ever got was Jaws. It's the soundtrack that put John Williams on the map and it's just a music cue that's become synonymous with a mood or a vibe. I mean, you do, you do that da-da-da-da, everybody knows what it is. So an incredible iconic score, Jaws. Friday the 13th, part four. In my you know, childhood days of watching the Friday the 13th movies, this was kind of the last one that I actually remember thinking was good up until maybe Jason took Manhattan. And then the last soundtrack, is the Schoolgirl Report, which is music from these softcore German light-hearted sex films of the 1960s. I'd never seen the films, but I saw the Schoolgirl Report 
album out on a label called Crippled Dick Hot Wax in the 90s and discovered the work of this composer, Gert Wilden. And Gert Wilden used to specialize in doing these sort of B movies and like softcore movies. And the music is just unbelievable. Every track on this is a great track. I like this so much that uh, back in 99 when I directed the film Big Money Hustlers, I licensed some of this music to use for certain scenes and they worked perfectly in them. Okay, got one more thing. I like to read too. And I like the replacements. Stay in the, house of eight the replacement story, their music, their personalities, and I think the chemistry that occurred when they came together really is a lot about desperation. It comes from, you know, family backgrounds that were sort of steeped in alcoholism, abuse, a Midwestern repression. This is just absolutely the best. Whether you're a Replacements fan or not, this book is just so well written and it's a page turner and so many things good and bad happened to the Replacements. They drank a lot and really destroyed their career because of that. Though at the same time they had a great career in their own way. There's a, a recently discovered 1985 live album of theirs that I'm sure you have. So here it is. Here's the live album the doc was just talking about. I grabbed this, another must have, the first official live album from the replacements. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I have a sad story to tell you. It may hurt your feelings a bit. Last night when I walked into my bathroom. Amoeba.